Hello and welcome back to High Water Studio. In today's episode, we are going to be continuing our discussion on the environmental engineering fundamentals of engineering exam preparation, or also known as the FE review. So today we're actually going to be focusing on organic compounds, organic chemistry. For the environmental side, you know, simple, basic environmental chemistry is probably going to come up in some form. And so it's, I think, definitely worth being familiar with the basics. Um, that way, you know, you're probably going to get a few questions there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with just a basic um, review of how to name an organic chemical. And we're not going to go you're probably not going to get anything super complicated, I wouldn't think, but you know the basic fundamentals are probably certainly could be there, and so let's cover that. Um, compound names, and we'll look at a couple of different things that you know might show up here. The most basic, simple naming convention of a straight chain would be probably the first thing to start with. So if we look at just a straight organic compound, and remember every carbon atom is going to have four bonds of some sort, right? Because uh, carbon needs four to complete its oxidation shell. And so all of these should have, you know, here we got three hydrogens and a bond, right? Two hydrogens, or I mean a hydrogen bond and two double bond here, right? And by the way, it's obviously it was a double bond. And so to name this, um, this one's pretty simple. This is about as easy as, as it's going to get. We have a, a straight chain here. The only a little bit of a loophole, or not loophole, but curveball, I guess, would be right here with the double chain, or the double bond, I mean, excuse me. So that's something to watch out for. And you're always going to name your compound uh, from the side of, and, you know, things can get more complicated, of course, but in these simpler systems, you're going to be naming it from the side with a double or triple uh, bond. Or if you have a branch and no other double bonds. So in this case, we have, this would be methane, this would be ethane, this would be propane, this would be butane, this would be pentane. So five is going to be pentane if there were no double bonds. But since we have a double bond, we are going to have, we would write this as pent two ene, right? If it was, if there were no double bonds, it'd be ane, but since there's a double bond right here, it's an ene. And remember, we're going to count from the shortest side to it, which would be on the right side, obviously. In this case, we have the first bonding group and then the second bonding group. That's why we have this two here, two in, representing the double bond. And pent, of course, meaning there's five carbon uh, groups here. Okay, so that's hopefully pretty simple, pretty straightforward. In our next one, we're going to mix it up a little bit and add some uh, some branching groups here, some branching chains. But still pretty, you know, not terribly complicated. But we'll say we have a methyl group here and a methyl group here. And again, a double bond here on the, near the, I guess you could say end or front would probably be more correct. Uh, so, now we have to be a little bit more careful about where our double chain or where our longest chain is. So if we had something like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, this would be our longest chain. And in that case, we would have some kind of hex, like hexene, or in this case, you know, you'd have some branching chains uh, to, to account for. Mm. There we go. So, but since this is our longest chain, this again is a pent, you know, it would be a pentane if it was an alkane, uh, but we have a double bond on this side 
So in referencing these methyl groups, we are going to count from the same side as the double bond. So we're going to have one, two, three. Of course, in this case, it's in the middle, so it you know, happens to not matter specifically on this compound, but the correct way is to go from the side of the, of the double bond here. And so we would write this as we're going to start with our chains, right? We have one chain, we have a second chain. So di for our two chains at location 3, 3. These are methyl groups. And this is a pent, and it's a pentene located at location 1. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. They all follow, you know, the simpler molecules like these all follow that same sort of convention. I mean, obviously there is a method to it. So if you can understand those basic rules, you should be able to wing it through most of what is going to show up on the FE, I would, I would expect. I mean, it should get you covered through a lot of it, at least in the basic naming. But let's look at um, another thing to kind of be on the watch out for is isomers. Whoops which is not the same as an isotope, right? An isotope has to do with basically your number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. If it's, they have different neutron numbers, then they have, you, you have isotopes. In this case, it's kind of similar, but you have different parts. MERS means parts, you have different parts. Uh, but a, an isomer, two compounds that have exactly the same chemical formula, but in a different structure is how you have an isomer. But it is kind of sometimes a little bit tricky. It can be a little bit tricky. You have to kind of think about what you're looking at because it may not be obvious. Um, so for an example, these two compounds, are they isomers? And if we look at this, so we have a double bond on the left here. We have a double bond on the right here. But this, these, this compound is it's the same compound. It's structurally the same. Uh, it's basically just flipped around. Right? If you took it and you flipped it over or you looked at it from the back side, it would be this. It's the same molecule. Right? So this is not an isomer. This is the same molecule. It's structurally the same and chemically the same. Um, so, but what if we looked at something like... Um, and we're going to actually, kind of spoiler alert here, we're going to talk more about halogens, but we're also going to look at them in terms of isomers, because this is one that you might see, oh, I keep doing that, okay. Okay, so obviously these are rotated, or they're swapped, right, between each other. Now, is that an isomer? And in this case, it is not an isomer, because this is a single bond, and in single bonds, these bonds are actually free to rotate, so they can rotate you know, this side can rotate around this side, right? They can just sit there and rotate around each other. So there's no fixed structure here. So there's nothing to separate one molecule from the other. These are functionally identical. Now, where this might get trickier is if you had, and I know this is not, it kind of messes up the chemical formula here because we have too many hydrogens. But if these were double bonds, then, and actually that's going to kind of bug me, so I'm just going to erase those. Um, so if we had this, now we have isomers. Because once you have a double bond, this rotation is restrained. You, it, it is difficult enough for these to rotate that these would be considered structurally different. 
Okay, so those are a couple of things to watch out for in terms of isomers. And also, you know, making sure that the way that chains branch is doesn't just look different, it actually is different, right? Um, okay, so the other last thing that I was going to cover, whoa, running out of time actually, is uh, halogens, like we talked about. So your most common halogen, there we go, your most common halogen, what am I, oh, I'm on the wrong way. Is going to be a chlorinated halogen. And so you may have, probably in your classes, you've probably heard of trihalomethanes, where uh, organic dissolved organic matter in surface water, when it goes through a drinking water treatment plant and they add chlorine, they wind up chlorinating some of this organic matter and they wind up with trihalomethanes. And it's a, a big concern in the environmental industry. In, uh, <laughs> environmental engineering industry because it's actually, you know, not really good for you to drink those. So, you know, we're looking at ways to reduce that. But anyway, so what that is, is when you have, we'll look at a case, we'll look at basically the same molecule actually. Um, when you have that's actually, let's kind of start maybe from something a little simpler or, you know, less halogenated at least. Ah, uh, I can't believe I did that. Okay. In this case, so you have, this would be vinyl chloride. You've had one hydrogen replaced by a halogen, in this case chlorine. And, you know, that can continue to happen where chlorine comes in and basically knocks that hydrogen off and replaces it. So once you have done that, or you know, nature has done that, uh, in this case, you're gonna have dichloroethene or dichloroethylene. They're the same thing, it's just a different way of pronouncing it. Um, and in this case, because we, we had talked about different isomers, this is what's called trans, uh, trans dichloroethene, and you can also have uh, whoops, H. This would be cis dichloroethylene, you know, because these are locked and unable to rotate the uh, orientation of the halogens makes a difference, right? And if they're on the same side, they're cis molecules or halogens. If they're um, opposite of each other within the same plane, then they would be trans. And that also, it's not just halogens, that's basically organic chemistry in general follows that rule, that naming convention. So that's one other thing to, to you know, be aware of. Um, and the only other thing, I guess, to to maybe mention before we call it a day on this episode is to just be aware of your functional groups. Uh, it might You might be asked about identifying a functional group or what is the functional group or, you know, what's the most important aspect of an organic compound? It's going to be your functional group. And that's where basically you just have these things that, you know, these groups that attach to the organic molecule, uh, like a hydroxide, which would be an alcohol, right? So if you had like C, C, and then hydrogen, hydroxide, I mean, this would be uh, ethanol, right? So this functional group changes the molecule in a very meaningful way. And it really de kind of defines how that, uh, the properties of that molecule, like methane or methanol and ethanol are going to be somewhat fairly quite similar really because they both have the same functional group. So let's try functional. Oh man, I got used to these group. All right. So that's it for this episode. I'm thank you very much. If you made it all the way to the end here, 
We appreciate you watching. If you have any questions on environmental engineering or the FE exam uh, or suggestions on what you would like to see reviewed next, please let me know in the comments. And I think we're going to do at least a few more of these and try to get a collection together for people who are interested in prepping for the FE and want to do it on our channel. That's great. I think we're also going to do a few more on programming different environmental or physical systems in different engines, different programming engines. Like I might do one on Unity next. It might be kind of fun. So anyway, great. Thanks. Um, see you next time.